in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed So Jesus was led and death was doing to him what he did to Adam. When he hung upon that cross, condition number two, the second element, he had become sin and he died. Hmm. You know what happened? Imagine the silence in heaven. Because the angels did not understand this. They were just obeying instructions given to them. What in the world is this? God, you turned your face on the Son of God and now he died. Hell was rejoicing and his body was hung there. Joseph of Arimathea said, please, don't leave this body here. He didn't know what was moving him to ask because the third element was about to be conquered, the grave now the issue of sin he had become sin now he had, ah my god he had died and when they took him to that tomb and kept him there they rolled the stone and they closed it physical realm you are done with your own assignment now let's see what happens let me tell you this because you see the bible does not and I've read my Bible. I don't mean to argue this, but I know from the authority of Scripture, with the exception of two people who were still even learning about them, Enoch and Elijah, the Bible does not record that anybody before Jesus Christ died directly and went to heaven where the Father is and stayed there. You will not find it in your Bible. No. No. The Bible says they died with a promise that something will happen because throughout their lifetime they obeyed the instruction that was given to them so it was taken as a token of righteousness and they say you wait here a day will come something will happen that will make reference to your obedience and it will bail you out now jesus is about to visit the third element the grave when he was done with the grave let me tell you what the grave is number one the grave is a place where I wrote here, the physical remains of a deceased is deposited. Could be a ditch, could be a pit. Physically speaking now, a grave is where the physical remains of a deceased person is deposited. But the spiritual meaning of a grave, listen carefully, a grave is a spiritual passage. A grave is a spiritual passage from the physical realm into the realm of the spirit it's a doorway that leads from the physical realm to the physical to the spiritual realm number three the grave is also where resurrection begins very important information about the grave the grave starts resurrection starts right at the grave lazarus woke up from the grave before he came out so a place where the physical remains of a deceased is deposited a passageway from the realm of the spirit to from the physical realm to the realm of the spirit are we together the grave now the fourth element I want us to look at very quickly is hell. There are seven words, seven Greek expressions of the word hell. But there are two that are most important for our discussion. One is called Gehenna. 
Gehenna is spelled G E H E W N A. And Gehenna was not a spiritual place, it was a physical understanding. Gehenna, in ancient times, outside of Jerusalem, when you study Bible history, there was a place where they set criminals on fire and they would burn them and throw their dead bodies. You understand? We see a, an example of that in most cities. There are places where you see them heap rubbles and they can set it on fire. That was where they called, they called it hell, but it was Gehenna. They would burn um, criminals, set them to ashes, and then throw their bodies there, you know, to rot and decay and so on and so forth. But there is another word called Hades, H-A-D-E-S. Hades is called the place of the dead. Hades, the place of the dead. Psalm 16 and verse 10. Psalm 16 and verse 10. Psalm 16 and verse 10. For thou will not leave my soul in hell. The psalmist was speaking prophetically about the things that would happen. Neither will thou suffer the Holy One to see corruption. The word hell there is the word Hades. Second scripture, Psalm 139 and verse 8. Psalm 139 and verse 8. He was speaking and said, where can I hide from your presence? And he said, if I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. And if I descend to the to hell the word there again is hades the place of the dead thou art there so we know that there is a place called the place of the dead so jesus died where do you think he went to he could not have gone to heaven because anybody carrying the nature of sin cannot go to heaven in fact anyone who has not been redeemed cannot go to heaven and until jesus came there was nobody who had enjoyed the blessings of redemption to go to heaven otherwise the bible would never call him the firstborn among the begotten he had to be the person to lead that way are we together now so jesus went to hell my apologies i don't know what is um, affecting the whole projection but let me read hebrews chapter 2 let me use my hebrews chapter 2 from verse 14. hebrews 2 14. i'll read it just listen for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood this is verse 14 now hebrews 2 14 he also himself likewise took part of the same took part of the same means he became in their form spiritually now that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death that is the devil and deliver them 15 now who through fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage so all that jesus did was so that he will finally go to the place of the dead the realm of the spirit and correct something that happened between satan and the first man let's see what happened now so the gate that opens up the physical realm to the spiritual realm opened for jesus and the bible says my god Paul was such an intelligent man this was how this guy just sat down and he was just watching it like a video and now began to write it you know what happened the Bible says when Jesus was going to go and join all those who had gone before him now while he went there he was in hell and something began to happen seriously there Satan was shocked to find out that although Jesus was there he now tried to force him to bow listen carefully bowing talks of acknowledging authority 
are we together now yes jesus now went in the strength of man adam and all the cohorts of hell were forcing him to bow to the authority of satan paul said that he made a public show of them now hold on let me explain to you what that means remember jesus said in the day you eat it you shall surely die that means god's word should not fall to the ground every man should die do you know what that means it doesn't mean to stop living physically it means there is no possibility for man to be connected to him again so jesus now comes representing the entire creation in that covenant and went through the punishment that man should go through and the bible says he shall see the travail of his soul this was a revelation given to isaiah the prophet that he shall see the travail of his soul and he shall be satisfied according to the teachings of great men like ew Kenyon, he now says when the legal claims of justice was now paid for you see that now the father's heart was satisfied jesus made a public show of them he says triumphing over them in it now the final battle he goes to satan who the bible called the god of this world who had collected the keys of dominion from adam through deception and jesus collected that key and apostle peter teaches us that he now went somewhere that is called the bosom of abraham because the the bosom of abraham is not heaven oh i hope you know that there's no such place called the bosom of Abraham in heaven. Mm -mm. There is a throne. The Bible describes about 12 or 13 things that we know and see in heaven. The bosom of Abraham is not there. Apostle Peter said Jesus went there and preached the gospel to them. And they believed. What was the gospel? Listen, I'm here with you now. Remember the promise he made to you through Abraham that in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. He was not talking of money. He was saying, Abraham, because of your covenant, the Jewish nation will come out and Jesus will come out of that nation and whoever believes, just like you believe, it will be credited to him for righteousness. That promise, I have come. Do you believe? They said, we believe. He said, come, follow me. And that was how they started going out. It's in your Bible it's in your bible after the defeat that happened in hell jesus led captivity john give me ephesians my spirit is fired up ah, yeah. ephesians 4 ephesians 4 let's start from verse 18 ephesians chapter 4 did I get that right? Ephesians 4 from verse, um, he led captivity captive. Help me. Look for it for us, media. It should be helping me as I'm preaching. Ephesians, let me pull it up. He led captivity captive and he gave gift unto men. verse 8 thank you Ephesians 4 and verse 8 wherefore said he when he ascended up on high he did what he led captivity captive in fact let's go to verse 6 let's start from there one God one father of all who is above all and through all and in you all now verse 7 pay attention it says but unto everyone is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ uh-huh wherefore he said when he ascended on high he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men verse 9 powerful information now now he that ascended but what is it that he also descended first to the what lower parts of the earth so jesus went there he's describing it now verse 10 and he descended and then when he was done he now came to the earth he ascended to finish his high priestly duty and then he came to charge the disciples this is the protocol that's what happened so he came out and the bible your bible says that when jesus was done 
now the issue of sin death the grave hell was about to be do you know that if jesus did not resurrect that means that number one death still had power because the last enemy to be destroyed is death and that also means that he's not exerted power over death over satan it means that he was trapped in hell so the bible says on the third day let me hurry up by the authority of the father resurrection when he resurrected first the bible did not say he resurrected alone the departed saints that they resurrected with him and walked around the streets of jerusalem and all men saw them are we together now all men saw them now when jesus resurrected i'm hurrying up because of time the bible tells us that mary saw him and she wanted to come and touch him she said rabboni he said don't touch me that means i'm not yet done with my i just came out of the grave but there is something i need to settle he now went to heaven paul was shown this when he taught the hebrew church that jesus now went to heaven he was no longer a savior in heaven he was a high priest and the lamb he carried his blood into that tabernacle are we together i've taught you and now poured that blood upon the altar to atone for the sin of man once and for all the moment he finished listen carefully the moment he finished triumphantly a coronation service was held in heaven for him the lord said to my lord sit down at my right hand until i make your enemies your footstool philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 now let this mind be in you please give it to us which was also in christ jesus verse 6 it says that although being in the form of god thought it not robbery to be equal with god but for your sake and my sake verse 7 he made himself of no reputation took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men verse 8 and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became what obedient to death think about it obedient not obedient to the father obedient to death is another word of saying he became sin because whoever has that nature of sin is a slave to death he became obedient to death even the death on the cross verse 9 wherefore god had so highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every other name at the resurrection of jesus watch this now a coronation service was held for him and when that coronation service was held that was when he was given the name lord l o r d now but the advantage is that he was not lord alone he was not king alone remember our communion mystery that everything he was doing you were doing it in him that's the part satan did not know because if all of us were to be saved every one of us will have to do what jesus did for ourselves and jesus went through all that and when he resurrected by the glory of the father satan was surprised because he found out now listen carefully he found out that there was a possibility that had come from the resurrection that man would not be able to have what was that possibility that because jesus rose again man is not only saved but man also will rise like him not just spiritually first like arising from the dead but that physically every time you receive eternal life into your spirit there are many things that you receive number one is the life of god but number two you receive something called the power of resurrection the power of resurrection part of it is for this age but part of it will be activated when the trumpet sounds follow me carefully we're discussing the doctrine of resurrection now there is a part of the power of resurrection that is in us but is not yet activated 
it will be activated the moment the sound of the trumpet is the signal that was given that the moment that sound comes everyone whether you are alive or you are dead in christ that software becomes activated and every the grave no matter where you died you must resurrect once you are in christ honor will be given to those who died in christ first we call this sleeping and then we who are alive and remain together will be caught up with him paul said that i may know him and the power of his resurrection let me tie up one or two things listen carefully there is a law according to hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27 that it is appointed unto man to die once why is it appointed to man to die because of the original sin of man even though you are saved spiritually unfortunately this physical body still carries with it that nature of sin and that is the reason why deterioration are we together now and all these other things that happen to man now your spirit will never never have to be separated with god again because you have received jesus that oneness that union a reversal of what happened to adam but listen carefully it is appointed unto men please leave that scripture hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27 once to die everybody say it is appointed it's not what you chose it's an appointment and it is appointed unto man to die once but after this that means death is not the end of all things listen carefully that though our outward man perish paul said but that there is something happening to our spirit man and that the real concern for the believer understand resurrection now is not so much your body paul is saying look relative to what has really happened to you the physical body is not so much the issue no matter how long you wait it is still appointed unto all men to die once you may ask a question and say apostle but how about enoch and elijah these are two men that the bible does not record that they died listen to me hear me i assure you i don't want to go into eschatology now but all of them will still taste death it is appointed unto man to die once the question is what is this death that he's talking about does it mean to get to a point where your body lies down no it is appointed unto all men listen carefully that there will be an event in their life when the spirit will be separated with this body if it happens earlier through what you call natural death or at the blast of the trumpet the bible says this is not the body that will carry the spirit it will still be changed within a moment a twinkling of an eye there are people who are not going to die physically they will not enter the grave however they will still taste of that event with that change that happens are you getting what i'm saying now this is very powerful it is appointed unto men to die once when jesus returns he's not going to find an empty earth there will still be people there but those who are alive physically and those who have gone before us the bible says honor will be given to them to rise up first resurrection and the possibility of that resurrection is because jesus now led the way and because we were in him when he died if he resurrected there is authorization for us to also resurrect are we together jesus could go to hades because death could now kill him he went there when he paid the price of justice he resurrected by the power of god he conquered the grave he conquered sin he conquered death and with that victory he now handed it to the believer listen carefully so the completion of the entire journey of redemption is not just giving your life to jesus is also understanding that one day one day that you have defeated death both spiritually and physically and that even if your outward man is ever shed away for your spirit to live you find hope 
because even though you die to die in christ means that that software was still in your spirit and that when the signal of the trumpet comes another body will be given to you and that spirit will return back that means everybody who died in christ we will still have that glorious reunion the resurrection now let me teach you another very powerful concept jesus himself was teaching john chapter 11 and verse 25 jesus said resurrection is a person not just an event the woman he was talking to was saying i know they've taught us in the temple that at the last day there will be such and such a resurrection jesus said no i am the resurrection and i am the life he said he that believeth in me read it please though he were dead yet shall he live what is this that jesus is saying jesus is saying even though i have conquered death and hell with respect to your mortal body listen carefully it is still possible that this body can transit and he teaches us in his pauline epistles that you never call a believer's transition death you call it what the idea of sleeping is that that person is not lost he's going to wake up even if he slept in 1904 it's just a long sleep he will wake up again this is what the bible calls the blessed hope the blessed hope is the hope of resurrection not just the hope of conquering sin and satan whatever it is so as we sojourn in this life as we celebrate easter on one hand we thank god for the victory that we now enjoy in this life but there is a blessed hope you know what that hope is that no matter what happens whether in life or in death we have already received that software that makes for resurrection first thessalonians chapter 4 i'll discuss one mystery and then we'll begin to pray first thessalonians please chapter 4 paul began to teach us himself about the idea from verse 13 we're reading 13 to 18 first thessalonians 4 13 okay but i would not have you ignorant say knowledge paul wants to give us knowledge i would not have you ignorant brethren concerning them which are what are you seeing that paul uses a term sleep please let me encourage you here every time you stand before a dead body of someone who received jesus christ in his lifetime i want you to know that you are simply looking at the remains the remains that body you see will be replaced by another body it does not matter how it was battered it does not matter what happened that body will be will be given another body and the bible says that person is only sleeping i would not have you ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that ye sorrow not even as others which do not have hope 14. for if we believe that jesus died and rose again everybody say died and rose again one more time say died and rose again your gospel must never end with jesus dying alone the resurrection and his exaltation at the right hand of the father is what completes the gospel even so because of that them which also that sleep in jesus will god bring with him 15. he now teaches us this is what will happen this i say unto you by the word of the lord that which which are alive and remain unto the coming of the lord shall not prevent them which are asleep now notice how paul is saying asleep asleep 16. for the lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of god and the dead in christ he's explaining it now shall rise first not only 
first 17 then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together the word caught up together is the word that we know to now to be rapture with them in the clouds to meet the lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the lord this is what jesus died to achieve that eternal separation notice the bible does not talk about heaven here it says be with the lord the location is not the important thing it is the person we will be caught up in the air and we will be with the lord where i am there you may be also because you will be learning that heaven is not the only place god stays there is something called a new jerusalem and he's coming back to the recreated earth and when he comes back because of that covenant of oneness wherever he is he said i am the resurrection and the life if i resurrect you you will be with me everywhere i am there you will be also can i tell you this a day is going to come on earth look at me ladies and gentlemen i'm sure it will not be very long from now we will wake up one morning like every other day don't you think you are just going to hear bah. no if you didn't hear it and you are remaining it means you didn't make it look up let me teach you something laugh but take it serious because it will happen it's not a parable let me tell you what will happen the bible says in a moment in a twinkling of an eye please blink your eye for me that's it that is how fast it will happen repeat it again have you ever had an event so miraculous and so sudden it didn't say in five minutes in the moment a twinkling of an eye an event will happen on earth that has never been recorded billions of graves will open in a moment loved ones some of them you have never seen them all these people these missionaries that died inside holes water all kinds of places you would see a glorious transition that resurrection and the bible says we who are alive and remain in a twinkling of an eye to look like we're all going together and we will wave this version of earth goodbye with all the nonsense and all the wickedness and the fuel crisis and all the trouble that keep plaguing people on earth rejoice only if you are saved because i'm about to tell you the other side of the story listen carefully the bible says in that moment i don't mean to scare you but please listen to the other version the greatest catastrophe more than world war ii is what will be happening coincidentally because when about 2.6 billion people professing christians exit this earth in a moment what if the person exiting is the pilot flying you what if the person exiting is the one responsible for some nuclear plant somewhere you think they will wait for you no i mean what i'm saying that moment just like this and that's it you will see bibles on earth you will see him books left in churches unfortunately there will still be many people in those buildings and they will say what has suddenly happened the Bible says two people will be lying together. One will leave and leave the other one there. Others will be grinding their thing to go and cook for their families. The other one will say, no more issue of cooking. I'm on my way going. And you will see that glorious exit. We will wave this version of earth goodbye. Do you know why? Because of the power of his resurrection. At that point, death will no longer have power over us we will not live by blood again no the reign of living by blood ends the moment that trumpet sounds the ministry of blood in our lives would have come to an end we will live by another life 
the reality the fullness of the earnest of that expectation that that ministry of the spirit the culmination of that salvation experience happens and we are with jesus and let me tell you this i don't mean to scare you it is that catastrophe on earth that will lead to the ministry of the antichrist are you seeing now the chaos in the earth will be too much there will be a need for a religious and a political leader to bring the earth in peace because the chaos will be too much nations and governments will crumble overnight and a world leader will come and say find peace his intelligence and his acumen he will he will bring a level of peace that you cannot imagine and with that peace the bible says for a period of about three and a half years and then he will unleash hell hell that will make world war ii look like humanitarian services i don't mean to scare you this is the word of god it's called written judgment no prayer warrior can change it All over the world and even in this place you are listening to me the resurrection is God's determination to see that we never end up in eternal damnation celebrating Easter by just eating chicken and jumping and saying whoa I'm happy is a complete waste of that that event the ceremony of it is not where the power comes from it is the commemoration of it the commemoration of it means that you take to heart the significance of it someday jesus is going to come what's that song in my spirit take it high for me please jesus christ the son of god you've forgotten it sing it oh Hallelujah, he arose. Oh, yes, oh, yeah. Hallelujah, he arose. The Prince of Peace arose. Hallelujah, he arose. Oh, yes, oh, yeah. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah, he arose. Is my question when we all rise and this life is over as we know it no more banks no more universities no more oil and gas no more certificates no more going to the mall to buy anything all the terrorists will leave them there. I don't know who they will attack. <laughs> Everything you've been trying to hide in your house, you're about to go and leave it. The pit you dug in your house to hide money, you will leave it there as you go. Can I tell you, I hate to be a bearer of bad news, but some of you, as you are now, you are not going. I'm not a prophet of doom it is by the integrity of God's Word there are people who will laugh at us when they hear us say these things as though we're just doing some spiritual gibberish can I tell you everybody in hell is a believer the only difference is that they believe too late I don't want to scare you with all the eschatological realities that will happen after this first flight that all those who do not make this first flight let me tell you what will happen the bible says because of the torture and the persecution that will happen that people will go to the mountain and beg death this death you are running away from now people will look for it and death to say my ministry is over mm, i've not I'm, i can't people will beg death 
when hell and everything to be unleashed to be unleashed now listen please i didn't come just to scare you nor did i come to flatter you and lie to you paul said that i may know him and the power of his resurrection some glad morning when this life is over i'll fly away when i die hallelujah by and by I'll fly away. can i tell you this the question i want to ask is some of you will be on your way going and you will look down and you will see your biological mother behind some of you will get up and you are already that power of resurrection is already in you but you will turn and see all your siblings they will say what is happening and you have to leave for many people it will be a service like this maybe it will even be a koinonia service just when i'm about to pick the mic and say hallelujah the only thing you will see is your mic dropping on the ground the fact that you can see it means you are in trouble <laughs> can i tell you please look up by the privilege of god's grace and by reason of what i do i'm not a medical doctor but I have stood before many dead bodies in my life. Many. I've been in a mortuary. I've been locked in a mortuary. Every time I look at a dead body, two things come to my mind. Number one, every dead body also saw a dead body in his lifetime. And now he is that dead body that others are looking at can i tell you this money will not resurrect you education will not resurrect you tithes and offerings will not resurrect you mm -mm. there is only one basis for the resurrection because he resurrected jesus he's given me the basis to know that in life and in death death has been defeated spiritually and will be perfected at that last trump why did i come to teach you today so that as you celebrate easter you only celebrate if that power of resurrection has been deposited in you by reason of acknowledging the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus and placing your faith now you can celebrate you can enjoy and know that I thank God for what has happened to me. Ladies and gentlemen, for a long time we heard that Jesus is coming soon. And for many people, they are laughing, coming soon, 2,000 years. There are two ways Jesus comes soon. He comes or you go. The day you leave, Jesus has come for you. Let me repeat, I'm not scaring you, you will live long. But can I tell you, even if you live 120 years, which is the benchmark we're giving, you can stretch through, right? But I assure you by God, even Lazarus, who Jesus raised, still died. Everybody who was raised from the dead still died. So it is not just the physical living in this body. I am the resurrection and I am the life. You can hear this preacher preaching and just laugh and say, wow, he's preaching well. On that day, when we leave, this sermon will be behind to teach you. Don't give your life to Christ under cruelty of the wickedness that will bedevil this world when we are gone. Do you know what it means for the earth to be pitch darkness? The Bible teaches that the evangelists that will remain when we are gone are the Jews. 
because everyone who names the name of Christ will be gone and it is only some of them who although they came from Abraham do not believe this truth they will now go back the Bible will suddenly become the bestseller after rapture everyone will be looking for the Bible to check what else will happen we laughed at this group of people laughing at them and saying they were wasting their times everybody will pick Bibles free and have to read and they will find it there people will cry and wail and say God come back They say no this second one it will not just be by you dying and going the trumpet has sounded it has sounded go and read your Bible and see the torture that is going to happen to people on account of the Antichrist thrown through fire going through all of this that you cannot buy or sell until you receive that mark on your forehead or on on the, the side of your hands and those who escape they will go to the mountain and say fall on us and it will not come the only way out will be matthiadom now you have a chance a cheap chance towards jesus i'm not scaring you it's not a lie it will happen there is no point sugarcoating it ladies and gentlemen it will happen the bible says if our hope is only in this life we are of all men most miserable for jesus to leave heaven and come and pay that price he knows what is at the other side of that disobedience my call for you tonight is are you going to allow the work of the cross his death his burial his resurrection to just waste like that because of stubbornness and rebellion remember the first thing that happened to man was disobedience and the first thing that happened to satan was rebellion do not allow a combination of rebellion and disobedience to separate you from him eternally there are people who have been martyred because of this gospel church history is full of men and women who died believing in jesus i can tell you even in death they cheated death my precious and wonderful mentor miles munro sadly he died through a plane crash it was so disheartening why would he die through a plane crash until i realized that he always said it that in death you would cheat death it is only your body that goes can i tell you this those who die huh? few minutes before their actual death they don't feel any physical pain again you are the only one sympathizing with the pain of the body i can tell you this few minutes to their death the power of this body and the pain thereof does not hold on them again no matter how deteriorated the body is that transition is happening unto life eternal or unto eternal damnation please look up let me tell you this anybody who dies without jesus there is no repentance again there is no forgiveness again i repeat there is no repentance again it is painful but there are people who have died there is no record in scripture that from the time jesus died and resurrected anyone who died had the gospel preached to them in hell that happened before jesus resurrected remember lazarus he cried a cry and said please what i want you to do is let somebody from this place rise up and enter the world and go to my family members and tell them please this thing is real and hear the reply he said they have moses and they have the law if they don't listen to them even if somebody comes out of the grave today they will not listen to them you don't have to wait until a dead body resurrects and tells you it is real here and there there are people who have resurrected from the dead others have seen nonsense what they have seen we know from scripture that that thing is not it's not a revelation from scripture at all it's just divination they were deceived but there have been genuine encounters of people for this promise is unto you and to your children and listen to me don't sit back there saying i'm happy I'm, I'm glad i belong to jesus if you are the only one who lives out of a family of 200 people 
and you are the only one who leaves you never got to tell them about jesus you know in church sometimes we're afraid of saying this other part because we say we don't want people let me tell you this being saved and being prepared for the resurrection is more than just trying to scare you jesus said when the spirit comes he will reprove the world of three things of sin of righteousness and of judgment i've not been to hell as a revelation so i will not come here and say oh, i was mm, i've not i've seen demons i've seen all kinds of wicked spirits but i've not been given the privilege to go to hell to see it but let me tell you the truth the lake of fire even hell is real believers at easter god mandates that we take a review number one of our lives and our destinies number two we become active intercessors for those who are not saved because let me tell you the catastrophe that happens when the church leaves even your arch enemy you will not want him to go through that kind of thing believe me i told you that the catastrophe that will come to earth will make world war ii look like humanitarian services what then is the significance of easter number one it is a time of gratitude to god for this eternal escape from damnation gratitude to god for using his blood and his sacrifice on the cross to bring for us this eternal escape from damnation translating us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his eternal son number two what is the significance of easter a moment of reflection a moment of reflection what does it mean to reflect to think deeply so that you continue to walk in the truths that you have received and so that you continue to guard jealously in another teaching i hope in one of the series before the year ends we'll be able to deal with this issue i hope i'll remember to bring it once saved are you always saved i will answer it during that series and will hopefully bring to end the confusion of what we call eternal security or do you have to keep working out your salvation in both dimensions i have had disastrous imbalances on both sides and i trust that god will give us perspective to understand and we'll be answering questions like can a believer lose his salvation if yes what is the condition are we together so easter is a moment of number one thanksgiving number two sober reflection number three easter should be a moment of active soul winning active evangelism one of the greatest ways to commemorate the resurrection of jesus christ is to be sure to declare to someone go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that jesus christ is Lord. you see let me tell you church of the lord jesus christ i am both old and new school we have to be careful at some of these things we have thrown out we have replaced some of these songs you see i'm, I'm not talking about the songs i'm talking about the ideas the average believer today is not soul winning conscious we are receiving conscious don't get me wrong god wants to give us all things freely to enjoy but the average believer is not evangelical in his thinking especially pentecostals and charismatics soul winning zero our idea of soul winning sadly and respectfully for most people is just a strategy for addition of church membership now listen carefully listen carefully and there is nothing wrong with that because until you have membership you cannot train and mentor them the institution of the church is the only platform that is able to mentor and raise believers if everyone seated looking at me now covenants with god 
that to honor this Easter, Lord, I will bring you the gift of two souls, three souls. Think how many people would be saved just during this period. We used to sing a song those days. Please take it down for me so I don't shout. In Anglican. Must I go and empty hand? Must I meet my Savior so? Not one soul with which to greet him. Must I empty hand and go? Okay, Jesus Christ, I made it. What did you bring as a gift? Nothing. I brought myself. Be grateful that I am saved. You will become like that man with one talent who said, I know you are a hard man. You like reaping where you did not sow. It's not enough to be saved. You must ensure that through your life, imagine how many people will walk up to you in heaven and look at you and tap you. And you say, who are you? You say you may not remember but thank you for giving to the lord i am alive that was saved thank you for giving to the lord I am so glad you came. Listen. May it not be that that day you will turn and see your roommate. You will turn and see somebody you laugh with and ate with in your office for 10 years and never told the person about Jesus. The person drove you as a big man for 15 years, never heard about Jesus Christ. Apostle, but I, I don't want to fall my hand. I can tell you this, believe it or not. The worst one is that you see your family members. Can I tell you, nobody will be spared who does not have that software of the resurrection power of Jesus. That trump and in a moment, all of us in Christ will arise. For some of you, the Lord Jesus will tell you, remember that night in Koinonia when my son was shouting, you laughed at the jokes, but when it was time for an altar call, you sat down when my spirit was telling you this is the moment of destiny. We will not be here forever. Whether we like it or not, that is the truth. Our goal is to live as long as our assignments demand. Serving the purposes of God and living victoriously. But can I tell you, you can have assurance today of salvation and you can tap into that resurrection power. There is such a doctrine of the resurrection. Our hope is not only in this life. I will pray for you to prosper always. I will pray for you to increase always i will pray for you to do well always but my greatest joy is not that you receive these things my consolation should be at the back of your prosperity at the back of your increase you have settled it with god and that power of resurrection dwells within you and you know that whether in life or in death you are victorious Till he returns or calls me home Here in the power of Christ I stand What height of love, what depth of peace Till he returns or calls me home hearing the power of Christ I remember many years ago watching Reinhard Bonke on that crusade ground I was already saved but I watched him I followed his ministry very carefully and I saw times when he started getting old 
I remember the last time he came for his crusade in Lagos as though he knew it would be his last the day they said he had gone I said my God this man was once alive and now he's gone hear me there are people who were alive as of January this year some have gone in fact there were those who were alive yesterday I will never mean you evil and as far as my assignment is concerned I will keep speaking life so that you will have that body healthy and prepared to leave your assignment but can I tell you it is not a wise way to fear death the purpose of longevity is not the fear of death the purpose of longevity is the time and the enablement to fulfill the purposes of God given to you look at me I want you to kill the fear of death this night to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord and if he comes hallelujah thine the glory hallelujah amen hallelujah thine the glory revive us again before we pray we are going to have three minutes of intercession that will be our corporate gift as a ministry to the lord jesus at this easter to say lord the least we can do is to intercede for the next two minutes for souls but before we do that i want to make an altar call while you are still seated there's no point playing games can i tell you if you take seriously what i'm saying god can give you a chance to make it right i don't need to cajole you no matter how stubborn your spirit is the holy ghost must have penetrated it to tell you that this issue of life and destiny this is it you are saying apostle while i'm seated here i cannot say for sure that if i die today it is heaven there are others who are saying if jesus comes i may be part of the many you are saying will be left behind i don't mean to scare you but listen to me i'm going to count one to three give your destiny a chance win that war or you are saying apostle i think i remember making this call but as it is my life has gone haywire i came to church i don't want to play games i want you to run and come and stand here nobody will force you but on that day there used to be a song we used to sing before um what's the song now on the last day on, on the last day only true believers on the last day only true believers on the last day I tell you if you know you are going to hell run out and come and stand here don't do big manism for your eternal destiny no it is not a wise choice apostle i'm not sure join them and be sure there is such a thing called the assurance of salvation don't mind all the naysayers who are saying you are coming out it's better to come out five times and be sure than to sit back in assumption and go to hell come to jesus come to him once and for all come to him everyone you see who is not coming out must have made this decision so there is nothing embarrassing about it if you are coming all the overflows please make sure you stand there we are going to intercede but i thought to do this so that i get it out of the way quickly please come Apostle, I've been going to church. I confess that I've been one of the people laughing at preachers. Don't worry, we forgive you. God loves you. Join them. Join them. You have to be saved. After this, you can now say Happy Easter and really believe what you are saying. There is nothing happy about the Easter to a soul that is determined to be damned. Thus will we pass 
from the earth and it's toiling only remember by what we have done come i'll give you one more minute i know there are so many people but there is still room there is still room come to jesus and those of you who are sitting you shouldn't be looking you should be praying because we are from this altar call now we are going to get into praying just five minutes if you cannot invest five minutes of your intercessory ministry for souls you are not a lover of god there's no need hurrying anywhere i want to pray listen to me those of you who are here please look at me the idea is not to scare you but the idea is to leave you with the truth jesus died and rose You took all my guilt and shame When you died and rose again Now today you reign In heaven and earth exalted I really want to worship you my Lord You have won my heart and I am yours Forever and ever I will love you. You are the only one who died for me, gave your life to set me free. So I lift my voice to you in adoration. May I please request? I know that there are so many of you, some of you are crying. There's no need to cry someday because of this decision you have made we will have another kind of coin on here not in this place do you know there is another fellowship i know there is another lift your right hand please say after me all of you you may cry but say it jesus is here let him hear you in one minute please say after me from the depth of your heart say lord jesus i come to you tonight just as i am unable to help myself i have heard your word tonight i need you say it again i need you in my life I need the power of resurrection in my spirit. I confess you as my savior, the one who died for me, as my Lord, the one my allegiance is towards, and as my king, the governor of my destiny. I receive eternal life into my spirit and i declare that as jesus defeated sin the grave death and hell i also by this confession i declare my my victory over sin over hell over death over the grave i declare that i have eternal life the resurrection power now lives within me I am a child of God, victorious on earth and victorious even after this life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Let me pray for you. Father, by their confessions of faith, I decree and declare that indeed they not only have salvation, but they have the assurance of salvation. Let nothing ever pluck them from your hand. In the name of Jesus lord you will save them you will keep them you will establish them now i pray for you the fear of death and doubt whether you belong to jesus or not i command that thought to leave your destiny forever let me remind you that you are not saved just by what you have done no man is able to save himself by the works of the law it is vanity and it is vain you are only saved because you believe in this reality that Jesus came, 
he walked upon the earth he died went to hell defeated hell death sin and the grave resurrected triumphantly and now he lives and abides forever now hear me please ladies and gentlemen let me encourage you make up your mind to continue to pursue that which makes for your spiritual establishment even as you have done the house of god is where we are built where we are established it's not just going to church like coming to be a member of a church it is more than that it is being planted in the house of god so that you will flourish in the courts of our god now there are a number of you um and i know that a number of you are rededicating your lives to christ i presume counselors you can manage both sets those who are making their decision the first time you can group them so you spend more time those who are rededicating their lives because of the crowd i'm not sure that because we have to get into a prayer session now so you can just pray so that they can return back to their seats there are so many people and so that it can ease up the work for the counselors our focus primarily now as far as follow-up is concerned is those who are saved for the first time so let me encourage you as you go those who are this is the first time you are making this decision it's an opportunity for you they will ask you to be grouped somewhere else please move there so they can just speak a word of prayer for those who are rededicating their lives and then they rush back are we together but for now may i request that you please move to my right which is your left let's celebrate them a number of them okay we are splitting into two right from where i'm standing all those who are here please go this way and then the remaining go that way thank you we're helping to manage because of the number of people let's celebrate them as they go hallelujah now our time is up in the next five minutes we're going to is this is our corporate gift tonight to the lord jesus i want you to think of at least two or three people you know who are not saved it could be your loved ones it could be someone and let's cry as a family of faith and say lord they will not go to hell not when we are here if you don't have anyone to pray for pray in the spirit please pray there has to be someone in your life some relative somewhere some unbeliever somewhere and those of you who are viewing following here is your chance to intercede pray for someone's eternal destiny lord that they will not be lost don't be tired lord in the name of jesus we decree and declare from the north to the south east to the west we pray for the unreached we pray for the unsaved we pray for missionaries we pray for men and women who are out there in the field crying for souls in the name of jesus strengthen them lord we pray that you save to the uttermost as a global family of faith we bring to you as a gift our intercession over the lost lord save them we release angels bring them to the foot of the cross pray for your father pray for your mother pray for your brothers and sisters pray for your colleagues in the office pray let a fire of salvation engulf africa nigeria europe pray for europe pray for america pray for these regions that seem to be losing out in many ways lord revive them
please pray shake parakatoska libranda getebele kosiata lord we pray for salvation we pray for salvation we intercede for the lost bring them to the foot of the cross in the name of jesus we decree and declare that the power of resurrection will catch up with them that they may know jesus they will pledge their lives and their days to your lordship Lord, we intercede in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me add one more prayer point. This one will be to you now. You are going to pray and say, Father, the power of resurrection, let it speak in my life right now. Total victory. Lift your voice and pray. The culmination of it will be when the trumpet blasts. But there are measures of it that have been given unto us to experience right now. Go ahead and pray. The power of resurrection, it must work in my life. That power that raised Christ from the dead. Someone is praying. That I may know you and that I may walk in the power of your resurrection. The power of resurrection. The power of resurrection. Bringing life and vitality to my body. The power of resurrection. Keeping me alive all through the moments of my assignment. hallelujah in the name of jesus up from the grave he arose with the mighty triumph o'er his foes he arose the victor from the dark dormant and he leaves forever with his saints to reign he arose he arose Hallelujah, Christ arose. He arose, he arose. Hallelujah, Christ arose. Last prayer point. Everything dead in my destiny, because he arose, I command you by the power of resurrection. Arise now. Open your mouth and begin to pray. My health that is dead or dying arise now is someone praying because he arose from the grave everything locked up in the grave finances opportunities my destiny i command you by the power of resurrection like lazarus come forth new doors that will give me an opportunity to serve his majesty come forth go ahead and declare please pray please pray please pray make meaning of your easter because he arose i decree and declare I arise spiritually I arise financially I arise destiny wise I arise and every power of the grave every power of the grave every grave cloth over my life every grave cloth over my ministry are you praying every grave cloth over my family my children pray I command you give way right now I lose those grave clothes if he arose then I arise if he arose then I arise pray over every challenge in your life 
financial challenges health challenges because he arose i arise refuse to remain in the grave he is risen the doctrine of resurrection demands that like he arose you also arise same power that conquered the earth lives in me ah, lives in me your love that rescued the earth lives in me ah, lives in me prophesy over your destiny same power that conquered the earth lives in me in me your love your love your love that rescued me Listen, I want to prophesy and declare and activate that power of resurrection. Now that you are still alive, there are still other things that are dead. And you can be alive and something around your life is now dead. I want to speak. Believe it. That in the name of Jesus, dead finances, let the power of resurrection cause you to come back to life now relationships come back to life now dead opportunities come back to life now dead health conditions hear me anyone here who is sick in your body and the devil is already trying to see that he deteriorates your body I command that dead organ to come back to life now dreams dreams that god gave you but for some reason they have died it comes back to life now <laughs> giftings abilities that have died that god gave you to bring you increase to bring you significance i decree and declare they come back to life now I hear me anyone wearing any grave clothes in the realm of the spirit by the power that raised Christ from the dead I lose you now go free 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 in the name of Jesus hear me any family here represented that has a loved one that is not saved we release angels to those houses we release angels to those houses supernatural encounters through dreams and visions in the name of jesus christ hear me please anyone having dreams of untimely death you keep seeing yourself with dead people you keep seeing yourself dreaming or maybe prophetic words have been coming be careful I see you dying I want to declare to you by reason of the power of death nothing takes you until your assignment is over I repeat nothing takes you until your assignment is over two more prayers everyone here under the yoke of the spirit of fear you can't live your life 
freely because you are afraid what if i go out and i die what if i come and i die what if i take a plane and it crashes what if i go by road and something happens i command that spirit of death that comes through fear to live your life now in the name of jesus the works of your hands whatever has died hear the word of the lord i bring to you the resurrection power hear me if the grave could not stop jesus from coming back to life i transport anything that needs to come from the realm of the spirit into this physical realm by the resurrection power let it appear in your physical realm here hear me if jesus could leave one dimension into another then every blessing that you need locked up in the realm of the spirit i pull it down to manifest in the physical realm in the name of jesus say after me very loud and clear say in the name of jesus i decree and declare that i am a child of god born of the word and born of the spirit i believe that jesus walked upon the earth i believe he died i believe he was buried i believe he went to the place of the dead i believe he defeated satan sin hell and the grave i believe he resurrected by the glory of the father i believe that he ascended to heaven i believe he is seated at the right hand of the father making intercession for me i believe that i am victorious in this life and hereafter no more fear no more limitations no more anxiety i am victorious today and victorious always give jesus a big shout of praise hallelujah the bible says the righteousness of faith speaketh on this wise i want you to go back home today carrying that consciousness i am victorious don't let life bully you in life you are victorious beyond it you are victorious if he rose you will rise on that day but for now everything connected to you must rise to match up what has happened in the name of jesus christ hallelujah hold hands together final prayer and then we're done i am serving a living God His name is Jesus Christ He died and rose and gave me victory I have victory One more time from the depth of your heart I am serving a living God. His name is Jesus Christ. He died, he died and rose and gave me victory. Now I can tell you, Happy Easter. Happy Easter means a victorious Easter. That you commemorate with understanding that you are a victor and you remain a victor forever. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. 
I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.